Good on you, Rick, down on the boundary with Tim there. It will be slippery, but at the present time, hardly a breath of breeze. And conditions favourable for a good yeah. night's footy. There's uh, Milburn and Higgins. I reckon you might see uh, Higgins playing a negative forward role. They realise that uh, Darren Milburn's pretty important. A little rough stuff, or in the case of the Bulldogs, rough, rough stuff. Umpire Ryan's got the footy. <laughs> and uh, Brian Lake there picking up uh, Lonigan and uh, Co Joel Corey starting outside the centre bounce. Daniel Cross, his opponent for the beginning of the match. Winner plays in the grand final, loser goes home. There's the bounce, one down by Ottens. Wide of the pack, Stokes, Selwood. Slips it away, taken by Joel Corey. Familiar names already, kicks inside the forward 50. Well done by Lake, backed himself against the footy, then fumbled. Selwood met solidly by Cross, the hand pass around the boundary. Forward to Ackermanis, it came from Morris. Little chip, Gian Siracusa. Now they can work it forward. Hargrave gave it across to Boyd. Boyd to centre half forward. Higgins runs down towards centre half forward, then proper on the lead. Welsh misses it. Coming up behind him, Scarlett gets a hand pass to Mackey. And the danger is passed. Wojcinski, it was an end right. It was end right. Back to Mackey, who kicks it down to half forward, and Steve Johnson. Then goes to the pocket. Mooney's target goes to ground with Morris and a free kick. They've changed up their matchups from round 16. Morris was on Johnson, uh, but this time picking up Cam Mooney. We saw that Higgins come up onto the uh, onto that lead. If he can get away from Milburn early in the match, it'll be a real win for the Bulldogs. Well, he'll be the go-to man. They've gone inside him. And so Mooney to the top of the square, and Bartell was the target. Lake, who's had a terrific start here, a couple of very important plays, gets it out wide, and then Tiller's a long ball, and Johnson running hard. Hunt on him at the moment. Johnson along the line. Taylor was so good against Revolt the last time we saw them. And then Milburn back to Corey. And Corey, who's uh, 14 times this year, has had 30-plus disposals. That's a lot of the footy. Martin's pushing up the ground. Mark's just forward of the wing. Pivotal duel, that one. Hudson standing the mark. Long kick from Otten, searching kick inside the forward 50. Lonigan almost, still goes after the footy. They stepped aside for him, he follows it out towards the 50. Ling's got it, steps outside the 50. Looking to get back in, decides to kick Bacon Square. Running hard, trying to get there as Adler couldn't. And the ball goes through for a behind. First score of the game then, Cats on the board. Looks like Acker is pretty close to Adler in the first stage. He started in the centre square. Did Ackermanis? Well, he likes to put pressure on himself. He did talk it up, as Tim was saying, before all week, and I've no doubt he would have gone to Rocket Eden and said, just give me a chance. Mm. I'll, uh, I'll have a go at him, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So Cross and Boyd both have had uh, big matches so far in this final series in terms of stats, and Boyd was fantastic last week. Just looking at that already, it uh, looks like it's, it will turn over. The, the dogs control the tempo, then they want to slow it down and make sure the cats go man on man. Well, Geelong might have turned it over here. Was it a high one? No. Welsh went to ground. Scarlett got hold of him. Mackie was quickly in. And then Corey was able to sort of get it to Bartell. Again, a missed handball. Selwood under the pump. Chance here for the Dogs. Stiff. They got a bad bounce. Selwood brilliantly done. Milburn, good tackle. The Bulldogs doing well in that area. And then Scarlett fished it out in the end. And to Corey cleverly to Mackie to Selwood. Ripped off it. Good start. And now Mackie. Mackie, the short one to Ottens. Selwood a bit stiff there, didn't have the footy. Ottens down towards the attacking 50. Lonigan comes up, takes the mark. Well, lower down than the chest. He centres. Mooney pops off the ball. Lake eyes only for the ball, knocked it away. John Siracusa into the path of Murphy. Murphy on the other side wing, feeds it back. Plenty of time that boy goes very wide. John Siracusa. About two metres in from the line, bypasses one man, that was Harley, coming up on the lead, Welsh, found it on the deck, across to Murphy, charged down by Selwood, Hunt gave it to Scarlett, short one to half forward, sliding in his Mooney, releases Ablett, here's trouble on the overlap, Scarlett, doesn't kick too many goals, going back, Stokes takes the mark a metre out. And in the equivalent game last year, Stokes was the man who fired them up, as he kicks his first goal of the evening. The 
kick three early, didn't he, in the prelim well, final? Don't those turnovers kill you? On the, when Murphy went to kick the ball into the forward 50 and the kick got smothered, there was three Bulldogs players and one Geelong defender. But that smother created the rebound. And then up the other end, Geelong had the numbers. So the ability to maintain possession in their forward 50 is, as always, critical. He's a high-quality small forward, isn't he, Stokes? Pressing up towards 40 goals this season. That's five inside 50s to one to Geelong and contested possessions 12 to five. And despite the dogs' pressure, which has been very good, they look like they're in the match. At this stage, Geelong just able to uh, to buffer that and to go and do what they have to do. So again, Ekamena starts in the oh. centre square. Almost gets his hands on it. John Siracusa, quick kick. Griffin, first time he's been in the play. Johnson, a second disposal for him, pushing wide. Higgins has looked all right early in the pocket. Hooks back and the behind. No doubt he's a go-to man. He's going to stretch Milburn. Milburn likes to zone off. He, they're trying to keep him accountable because they realise how important he is to their structure and their setup. Matthew Scarlett to bring it in then. Drives it outside the 50. Cross is pretty good overhead. He is. He's marked about 55 metres out. Short, John Siracusa. John, I come back one metre. That's it. He's about 75, 80 metres from goal. I reckon that's where you get the kick. You should just go get it in, put their back under enormous pressure. Manus. Now he sets it up. Long ball. Dunawood's full forward. Welsh is in front. Spills wide. Griffin leads in the race. Has support. Johnson. Now Gilby. Can he get through? Spots a man. Higgins. He's the one. He's the one they're going to go to on every, every occasion because they know that Milburn will play off. And three times they've gone inside, and each occasion they've looked for him. That all came from actually the way uh, the Bulldogs defended the kicking. They do actually vary their kicking defence extremely well, and eventually Geelong had to go to a contest, cross marked it, and then from those chain the possessions. It was a good kick. Goal it was a good kick. You'll have no trouble with the distance. It was a kick in that really didn't take into account the ability of the rival player. That's it there. The new call is OK overhead. There's the kick from Higgins. If they do use him up, box, the challenge is going to be for him to make use of the ball. His first inside 50 kick didn't quite come off. Yep. Uh, two Bulldogs players collided. And on that occasion, he missed the goal. He's got to finish off those opportunities. Otherwise, yep. Mil otherwise Melbourne won't give him the respect. You don't get a lot of opportunities against Geelong, and you've got to capitalise early. So, Ottens and half back. They've stopped their run, though, the Doggies. They'd be happy with that. Talked about Ablett's contribution last year. Ottens had a massive match oh, against Connery in the prison. What was the difference? Down to you, Tim. The Rook has gone to the dangerous Gilby. He's trying to push forward. We saw a moment ago he kicked the ball there to Higgins. That's what they'll be trying to do, get the ball in his hands over halfway. Ablett from Corey. And then Mackie and Hahn. Good mark by Hahn. Well, he had to. Because if he didn't, oh. Geelong were certainly set up. She had a sloppy handball. He's got a... Heap of time here late. And just strolling from half back, undecided. Slow handball over the top to Boyd. And then Boyd inside to Callan. And then Callan to Griffin. And then Griffin measures the kick to half forward. Here's Higgins again. Left foot. That's looking better. Home it goes. What a start for Higgins. Well, very rarely does a, uh, a forward dictate a matchup like that on a defender. Generally, the defender will go to whoever they wish, uh, and they set the matchup tone. But on this occasion, it's quite obvious that Higgins has been set for Milburn. They've used him at all opportunities, and the bodywork there was very good. Just to leave Milburn under the ball, to collect that ball and to snap it on his left, that's his toughest chance, and he took uh, advantage of that one. Sean Higgins, the 11th man taken in the 2005 draft. Four positions ahead of Travis Barker. Got a mismatch, too, in the forward line. Uh, Taylor's gone to Harbrow, which the Doggies would be pretty happy with that. Menson and Blake. One by the former. Stolen by Ling. Floats the ball down towards half forward. Johnson, unkind bounce. Taylor made for the man coming over the top. Well worked. Callum goes back to Hargrave. Hargrave beyond the ring. Griffin. Hands
comes to it, couldn't hang on. Corey went to ground, Ablett's got it. Akamanis got him, he was given a long time. Kelly inside the forward 50, Bartel. Has he got magnificent judgment? Uh, oh, he just positioned his body so that Harbrow, I think it was Harbrow, couldn't get at him. C coming out of that centre bounce, this is usually what the Cats do. Uh, three dogs there to one in Steve Johnson. That's usually what they do on the other side uh, to the other teams and what they're so good at. But still, they're able to buffer that and uh, get the ball to Bartel. Taylor off with Jinsky on. Bomber Thompson, I bet, not happy with the matchup on Harbrow either. So, Jimmy, right on the 50. Great kick. Starts on line, just pulls the man on the line. Gilby, it's a go. Well, what a great finish. And as you said, Lee, he's just a wonderful player in flight, watching the ball come through. Griffin's had a couple of opportunities now. He just looks a little bit fumbly. He's playing up forward, swapping with Cooney through the midfield. But Geelong, they really hurt you when they go forward. And Joshy Hill, well, he uh, looks like he's going close to Bartel, making sure that he doesn't give him too much room, but he's a wonderful finisher, Jimmy Bartell. Thirteen four from set shots, Tim. Well, Bartell has been in rare form. He's topped 28 disposals in nine of the last 10 games. But the most important thing, he's been a multiple goal kicker in six of those 10 games as well. So he's become a real weapon up forward. 22 goals for the season, first time over the 20. So he's added something. Took possession of the ball, Gary Ablett. That's it, Akin, no close-up. Um, let's see what happens in the next five or ten minutes. Bulldogs have been pretty good so far. Cats lead on the scoreboard. Mooney, Morris, John Siracusa, well done. He's had a good start. And then caresses the ball to Acker. He's got some space. Corey to put some pressure. Acker with a long bomb. Murphy a target. Okay. And Harley oh. belts it over the line. Gee, what a, what a piece of play there by Harley. Just a great spoil. He was under pressure too. He was out of position. But mm. the key to that was he didn't take his eyes off the footy. Boundary throw in. Otten slams it away. Joel Corey close to the boundary line. Did well. Mackey taken down. Spilt it. Johnson hurriedly. Smothered by Ablett. Diving in his cross. Did brilliantly. Griffin right on the 50. Sends it long. Higgins will stay down. Now he got his hands to it. Just skirted the pack, almost ghosted in front. And it's out of bounds, a good result for the Dogs. And the other thing we saw in that bit of play was Ablett kicked the ball in from the middle. He hadn't moved, and Ackerman has got it on the rebound. That's where Acker's going to be dangerous, because he'll find space. Blake knocked it back towards the middle. That's dangerous. Scarlett's in there. That's dangerous as well. Went to ground. Wojcinski a fumble. In goes Blake. That ball's not coming out, or is it? Wells came out minus the footy. In trouble is Mackey. How did he get rid of it? Doesn't matter. Johnson goes in and kicks a goal. A really good example here. The ball, it's alive. They don't keep it. They don't jump on the player. You'll see here, the players are just holding off. They don't jump on them. We're talking about the doggies here. They keep their feet, they keep the ball alive. And as a forward line player, that is vital. You've got to keep the ball alive. As soon as you jump on top of players, they hold it up. And all of a sudden, you've got a stoppage, which Geelong love. No, no doubt the dogs want to keep the ball alive as often as possible to stop those stoppages. 50th goal for the season, Tim. Again. And now Ottens have all gone forward. It's an undersized defence, but they need to get the ball in there quickly to take advantage. Ling to Ablett. So, Harley with some run. Swung him down the tackle. Threw him straight down to the ground after the handball of the ball. And you're going to Swung him down, let him go, Mitch. Play on, play on. Bulldogs have had six tackles to two, Bruce. They're going to risk some of those every now and then. Bartell finally got it to Ablett. Mooney was doing the roving. He was slow off the mark. Callan against his old team for the first time. It's interesting, I stated the obvious on this, but the boys have had a fantastic first 10 minutes according to what you thought may have happened in the game. But there's a lot of space out there to give a game of keepings off. Eventually, the Bulldogs, the same as the Swans last week, they outrun the Swans. The question can they crack the Geelong defence? Crosses, quick handball, ready to space. Ackermanis on the up. Back with Cross. Down low. And then uh, Hill very cleverly actually.
obviously to Callum, and Callum out wide, so little victories here, here's Tiller. Pushes up towards the wing, comes back to where he So the puck there, if you like. Got the impression he's going to kick long. He'll go short as well and finds Gilby, who's a powerful kick. 65 metres out, spears the pass in, and Higgins has got it again. Go through, boss, go through. They've also got Lindsay Gilbert playing Lindsay forward on Mackie. They're making perhaps Geelong's best zone-off defenders in Mackie and Milburn have got the angle, Max, here, perhaps okay. the two best Bulldogs ball users Thanks. in Higgins and Gilby. They get in usable space. They can be dangerous. Well, the problem with zoning off is you're giving your opponent time, a bit of space yourself. And uh, at the moment, the Bulldogs are pinpointing their passes sufficiently well. Just four behinds for this man from set shots this season. But Geelong making some bad decisions so far. That's a beautiful kick. He's on fire in the first turn. Sean Higgins. It's a great story, Sean Higgins. He had a serious injury. They didn't think he'd get back to the uh, end of the home and away. He worked his tail off. He did. Lindsay Gilby, such an important player. Normally off half back. It, it's amazing when you get a bloke that can kick the ball like that. When you're kicking inside 50, how uh, valuable Damaging. you realise yeah. a player like he is when you are a forward. Just got over the top. He's a, he's a wonderful kick, but that's a great finish. And he's doing his job beautifully on Milburn at the moment. So five disposals, a couple of goals, two goals in this match, equals his goal total for the season. And he's been fantastic, as Lee said. Whether to, whether Western Bulldogs can keep this up, they've gone inside their 57 times, they've scored five times, so mm. they're being very effective in that area. Blake did well to Selwood, to Kelly. Back he went to Enright, Wachinski. Back inside, Kelly. The two guys that have come into the team, and then Ling... And then Ling kicks wide to half forward, Johnson and Hargrave. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no, left arm around. So Johnson outside 50. Clever kick. Brilliant kick by Johnson. But Kelly's still a fair way out. Well, coming off an injury as well, we'll just see how often it is you'll give it off. Well, he did give it off. And then rather casually... He did slip. You can tell the Thank players you. are struggling a little bit with their footing. The ground is going to be just a little bit shifty, of course, with a bit of rain. So the catch inside 50, but not in the position they thought they might have been. Otten's terrific. Ling on his wrong side. Oof. No free kick. Pitch stiff there, Boyd. Kelly starting to get a bit of it. Has he kept the ball in? No. So it'll be a Bulldogs kick. Just good pressure by the dogs. They're working pretty hard. Geelong, they're trying to cut them open. Terrific. Just not sharp enough at the moment, the Cats. They're, they're not hitting their targets, and well, they look like they're second-guessing their first possession. The, yes. Bulldogs, the Bulldogs' pressure has been fantastic, and uh, and how good is it to see this? We weren't sure what we were going to see, but it's fantastic. Lake. Well, concedes are behind. Not sure he gained much there. The other the good thing is Cooney hasn't touched the ball yet on, uh, on Ling, and they've got a goal lead. That's... Uh, Good news. Plenty of upside in that job. Gets it back to Lake. Got the 3 4 5 here, the Cats. So Lake in the goal square. Don't tell me. Well, I think it, the, the dogs have shown their hand. They're not prepared to kick it to a contest. They want to wait and wait, find a loose player, control the tempo, make Geelong man them up man on man. That way they know where the Cats are if the ball turns over. Down those two behinds, just given away. Cooney comes along outside the defence of 50. Johnson. Find there, James. Well, that's the problem you with Lindsay Gilby that. playing up forward. They haven't got him to kick it in and to kick it from half back. So you're going to have to find other players, and that's why Brad Johnson's gone a long way down the ground. Johnson from left half back drives it up towards the wing. Hill was in front, off hands, out of bounds. They'll regroup. Well, I think they'll be happy to keep the Geelong to two goals. They've been inside enough. Ottens did very well. Selwood held up, and then Ottens on hands and knees. Boyd, terrific. Hill, Cooney. So first real positive for him, and he's copped it up to Varko, to Johnson. So Varko gave Johnson a look-away handball, and then Johnson's look-away kick 
Bartel clever, touched it on for Wojcinski, and then Callan in hard, Johnson that's still there, good effort though by the Dogs again. Ball coming out eventually. Gave it a chance to come out. Got uh, Adam Cooney trying to pick up Joel Selwood here, and Ling following Cooney. It's a uh, classic ring ring rosy Dogs with it by five points. After the bounce, good spot for it. Went very wide with Hudson. Taken by Harbrow. Wide again, bounces it up towards the wing, coming across on the angle. Taken high was Melbourne. Released the ball, taken by Harley. Got it across to Kelly. Low down chance for Wojcinski. Wojcinski inside the forward 50. Bartel from behind. Barco taken down by Callan. Back comes Bartel. His good mate Callan on all fours. Gets a hand pass out. Now a chance for Johnson. Steps Harbrow. Kicks across the face of goal. And a good mark is taken by Hill. Well, the dogs are up. He, he, he takes more contested marks than any other doggies player out there. He plays very tall. And a bit like Andrew Ops, he's got those yeah, long Lindsay, arms that just keep Amita, extending. Amita, Cameron. And he's been Thank kicking you. goals at the other end. He's kicked four goals in the, uh, the two finals so far. Griffin the target. Well, the enormity of this effort so far, in the 14-match streak that Geelong are on, they've only been led once at any change, and that was when the, when the Kangaroos led them by a goal late in the season at quarter time. No other team's been in front at any stage of a break in the last 14 matches, so still four minutes to go. Let's see what happens. Murphy to full forward. Minson cleared him. Back as a chance. He'd back him from here. That's his bread and butter. Yeah, no, he's a beautiful kick on either side of the body. He doesn't miss from that distance. So they have needed that goal because I think the Bulldogs have just had a fantastic 20 minutes. Geelong have had an ordinary 20 minutes and they were only five points in front. So that extra goal now justifies, I think, and vindicates the way they've been playing. Straight off the ground, straight into the forward line, straight onto a goal. As a coach, you've pat yourself on the back. <laughs> but a little bit lucky. How about that? The lead is out to 11 points. Ackerman is like a kid running into Disneyland. Just charging down on the left foot and making no mistake. It's when your eyes light up, Den. Nothing yeah. in front of you. Rucks go out again. Ottens. Hudson goes after it. Head down is Cooney. Tries to dig it out. Selwood, wonderful courage and vision. I'm not sure he knew Kelly was there, but he got it to him. Slapped away by Morris. Coming through his Stokes. Step for step. Harbrow. Stokes wheels around. Lays it off. Lincoln kick it a fair way. Bacon goal square. Getting back down there and juggling the mark. He's late. He's been brilliant. He's been very good in his first 20 minutes. He's won every contest that he's been in as we see Gene Syracuse come to the bench. And that's bad news. Callum, did he mark it inside the field of play? Just... Gene Syracuse going off with uh, maybe a sore elbow. So Hudson. That's not good news. No. Six clearances last week against Sydney. Back in the form that he had early in the year. To gave Cross no options there. So here's what happened to Gia. Oh, that's uh, Ouch. that went the wrong way. Don't tickle. Cooney brought down. Th no this is where they've been good, the doggies. Ge Geelong are normally very good at their clearances and uh, getting in there, but they've been able to nullify. And it, it, it's, it's hard to remember when Geelong have actually got it and flicked it out the back. It's their normal stoppage play. Well, they got some practice against the Swans, didn't they, last week in this type of tough clearance play. They were very good in that tight first half and, and then opened it up in the second. Harbrow's high kick. I think as we see, this another angle here of Gene Syracuse's left elbow. Oh. Ooh, but, uh, ooh, there's going to be a bit of damage about that, I reckon. But around these stoppages, Ox, you're right. They haven't had it all their own way, the Cats. The Bulldogs have done to the Cats what the Cats usually do to other teams. Otten's yep. knocked it down. Plenty of Cats around the footy. Mackey, Corey, gets it back from Enright. Turns. Kicks towards midfield, wonderful stop. Mackey running to space, goes inside the forward 50, and Lake pulls off again. Drives it towards the other side with precision. That was terrific. He allowed for a fraction. He hit Murphy on the chest. Short one, 
Comes into Johnson. Johnson 60 metres out. Back to the middle and Murphy. They're running the catch around at the moment. Murphy though, too clever by half. Eagleton throws it on the boot going back. Ablett takes the mark. Gee, Murphy, I reckon, a couple of times he's messed them up here in the first quarter, as good as he is. Is that for a kick? Varko running hard now. Wojcinski, Stokes did this well. It's going to be a goal. Might be being hard on him, but he had the kick smothered earlier in the quarter. Yeah, I, I, look, I think with that one there, that uh, with Robert Murphy, not enough talk by Eagleton to tell him that he actually had someone behind him. But it was that kick into the middle that split them open. And the run of Wojcinski is something that the Cats would have been hoping for, that he'd get back in the side and he'd give them that run off half back. To get a goal like that, that's a bonus. But a really good setup by Albert's kick into the midfield. Wojcinski's running goal, Ricky. A terrible start to Jez's uh, 150th game. You see him there in the hands of the medical staff of the Bulldogs. Hybrid extend his left elbow, as Buck said. He's in severe pain. He's also got some tingling down his arms. He may have some nerve damage, also some ligament damage. But I have seen guys hybrid extend their elbow before, have it strapped up and go back on. So I'm not going to rule him out yet. Gee, that's red hot. The umpire thought that he didn't make an attempt. Could have got it off. Okay. And so Cross comes out with it. Drives inside the forward 50. Coming back with Carrie Genroy. Has had a terrific season. A little chip to half back. Johnson swings it out wide. Blake. He'll adjust through the interchanges, bearing down. Blake under pressure as a result. Morris was coming at him. Kicks to half forward and Rook. Talk about courage. Oblivious to anything that may have been coming. Went back and took the mark about 40 metres out that almost directly in front. It was really that interception in the uh, Bulldogs forward 50 by Enright. That Mark's created the, uh, the turnover. And uh, when you play keepings off against the Geelong, they, well, well, they hold possession, generate the shots. So this for the lead. And that will be deflating as far as the dogs are concerned. He puts it through. I think what happened then is the Bulldogs actually went more quickly into their forward line and when Enright was able to cut that off, they had the outlets that uh, the do Dogs have been denying them for the most of the match. They turned it out, they got through the corridor, they've always kept their width as we see. This time it was Blake and uh, they're not afraid to go long to a one-on-one. -on -one. Rook was able to double back and take a courageous chest mark in the end uncontested but to, to go back with a fight was fantastic and the finish off was better. Played 14 of the last 15 games, Rook. Had a lot of injuries last year with a hamstring. It's interesting at these uh, centre bounces, the Geelong defence just uh, congregate the centre corridor, and if the Bulldogs guys go outside the centre corridor, they just tend to give them that outside space. So they just protect the key part of the defensive 50. So the Cats get that lead with a couple of goals. <laughs> Corey rode it well, Stokes cleverly to Ling, and then Ling's right foot kick penetrating. Well done, Ekamanis. That's a good win. Switches it up. So Gilby in the back half now. Had 29 disposals last week. It's a good kick to Cooney. Sure. And then Cooney's quickly off away from Ling. And then to half forward, another great kick to Murphy leading up. Such an important player. Lee talked about him being a barometer, Murphy. Here is Hill. Went very, very early. Corey getting a lot of it. She Bartell whipped away from it. Higgins trying to get it out. Hunt's big body. Taylor. Johnson in the back half. Bartell. What of the boundary line. Deliberate. Deliberate. Hey, clear it out. Clear it out. Clear on. And Eagleton, a left footer, is in a good spot, but he makes a bit of a meal of it. We know how much the Cats like to share it around. There was a handball in that bit of play that I couldn't believe that Corey tried to give it there to Bartell in between four or five dogs. There was, a, there was a handball target out wide, but uh, they just back themselves every time. Mackey got it from Wojcinski, goes down a wide half forward. Abbott got a clever mark, he appeared to be off. He knows there's a man lurking in the square. One of his, Ronigan. Well, he's been paid the mark. mark. He's about five metres out, in fact. Front. He's giving him 50, is he? I'm not sure. Maybe he thought he marked it in the square, and I think he did. Yeah. 
What about Joel Corey? He's on fire. 11 possessions. Interesting. He's number one in the AFL. He gets a possession every three minutes and 35 seconds. So, from the time it takes Jackson Brown to sing, I'm the cat, he gets a possession. <laughs> There's Lonegan. What if he sings it in his head? Back in a run. It's a goal. And this is the demoralising thing about playing such a good side, is you put in a very good quarter of footy, and you look at the scoreboard, and you haven't been able to... You, fair enough, you're close, but you haven't been able to get on top of them. He was off your ablet, and uh, Gilby held him up. Like, he let go when he did, because the umpire still hadn't called play on, and that's where you can be you, you can be uh, caught for a 50-metre penalty. But uh, Ablett, uh, he knew. He knew he had a free player there, and he wanted to get it on. That's quick movement. Can't stop that. They're rolling the Cats have kicked the last three. Lonigan has kicked more goals in the second half of the season than any other Geelong player. What a story he has been. So, Minson left it for Blake. Cooney gets a free kick. Get the ball, Adam Cooney! There's not any one of the dogs that are focusing on Milburn. He had 19 first quarter disposals against him in round 16. Just the two so far tonight. So Higgins had that immediate roll. Cooney's probing kick. Hahn couldn't quite, then couldn't fetch it back. And then Corey again. So Jackson Brown still singing, Dennis, and he got another one. It's a good song. Back to Blake. Blake run down. Dogs all over him. And then Blake finally gets it out. Corey again with Acker. Boundary throw in. Well, they had a chance there, the doggies. They went inside with a beautiful kick from Cooney to Blake. Uh, to, um, uh, to Hahn, he couldn't grab it, and they're the chances you need to take. Cooney almost getting a bit of it now. Cooney, Ling, hands and knees did well. Selwood, fantastic down low. You've got it, you've got it, you've got the three. Will, give it to him now immediately. Too high. Is there a better competitor one on one than Selwood in a, in a no. tight, crunchy situation? Jeez. I don't think so. Not with his uh, experience. He can fix the footy better than anyone else, I reckon, in the game right now. Well, it was a great quarter, but fitting a prelim final. Who are that? So we've got the free kick with five seconds to go in their half-back line. They very nearly took the mark uh, before the siren went. That's how dangerous they it's are. Centre corridor ball movements, fantastically uh, positive. Let's see whether G and Syracuse can play a role. Ricky suggested he might have. Terrific opening turn for the Cats. Well, they've done it again. They're in front. It's 5-3 to 4-3. This is finals footy. 5-3, 4-3 then. Quarter time. The first preliminary final. And the Dogs... Certainly snarling in the opening turn. A long way to go. Bear in mind in round 16, it was all square at half time, and they lost by 61 points. There's the bounce, and away we go. Corey once more taken to ground. Cooney has grabbed. It doesn't come out. Interesting. Joel Corey, a possession every two minutes and 34 seconds in the first term. So we're talking about running on empty. He's not, but Jackson. Duration. Forget it. Bling out of the middle. Goes down towards half forward. Gilby. Nice gather. Generally good. And again with the boot. John Syracuse are right back in the action. Boyd on the overlap. Goes inside the forward 50. Welsh. He was stiff there. Ricochets about 40 metres off his knee. Hahn's got it. Lines up to Hahn. Has it got the carry? Just missed. So there's been a big move here by the Cats. They've gone in a quarter time and said, right, Sean Higgins, of course, has some headaches. Let's put uh, Enright down onto him. And Milburn's on the pine. So Mackey made the first ball. Taylor to Harley. Then back to Mackey. Haven't quite been able to get it out here. Still working hard. Seward was involved. Harley got it back to Mackey. He's conceding, and he goes all the way back. Now, Geelong don't do that too often. No, Bucks, I want to follow you up. You said Milburn had 19 in the first term last time they met. Well, between him and Scarlett, they had 33. Tonight, only six. Yeah, they've done the job uh, in the forward line, the doggies. Not just when they've got the ball, but when they haven't, as we saw from that pressure. Hunt to Taylor. So good against the Saints on a champ. And no doubt he was much better about a final tonight on the back of that. Drives it towards the outer side. The big guys lock up. Hudson got a hand to it. John Syracuse had it, lost it. Ottens tries to reel it in. And the umpire, umpire Bozzo, 
calls for it. I'm well, just watching James Syracuse there. Not a hundred percent in his first contest, but you have your elbow bent backwards and inside out. You're not going hundred percent either. So Bartell to Ling and then Ling to Mackey. Normally a good kick, Mackey, and that's a beauty to Ottens wide. Ottens has been very good. Uh, he's getting away, and Hudson and Minson, just a one touch between them. Their contest has been good in the ruck, but that's about it. G. Bartell, such a great target. And then Varco cleverly to Mooney. Well oh. done, though, till at the back. Big ball coming up here. High contact! High contact! No, 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 Matthew, Matthew, don't elbow! Got him on the head! Gee, that was an important one because Boyd was under the pump and he stood his ground and he heard the umpy. So Varko's dinky kick inside looked okay, but Tiller was very, very good. And this is the tempo play that we've seen from the Bulldogs during the first quarter. They want their Geelong opponents to come to them. They want to uh, be able to control the tempo, make sure that they hold on to the ball and get it forward on their terms. But they go, you've got to be skillful to do that. And as you said, Lee, generally, Geelong will be good at that. But Western Bulldogs, one of the more skillful sides in the comp. Well, Tiller made an error there, but only moments ago saved them probably a certain goal. So, and did a bit of good work, but he'll be right. Real body battle, that one. Cross, Griffin in trouble. Well done, Varco. Here's Tiller again. That's a lovely kick. Centimeter perfect. Clear the man in front. Harbour out, found on the lead. He's on the wing, goes across the ground. More ways than one. Cross, looks down towards half forward. Murphy is moving. Can he get there? Yes, he can. Whoops, dropped the mark. Hasn't been his name so far. Harley does brilliantly. Knocked it away. In goes Corey. Well done, Cross. Lake. And now Murphy, that's better. Johnson breaks hard. He kicks for space in front of Johnson. Johnson out number two on one over the top hunt. And that's a pretty good result despite that look from Johnson. Things have worked out okay for the dogs because they'll get a boundary throw in. Well, this is the armor. So this is where Geelong really make you get up and beat them in the first five minutes of each quarter. Hudson to Boyd and then Boyd belts it back in and Mackey unopposed really. Brett Johnson was running back. Hacker decided to stay down and Mackey took... An easy on, mark. Play on. Right now, the seagulls are flooding on the MCG. Sure. Aren't they? they are everywhere. Attack of the birds. To be head run. Here's Ling. Good looking kick. Kelly couldn't quite get to the back. Again, Tiller important. Gilby, well, he deliberately ran over Smart the line. Footy. Yep, smart Sm footy, step over the line, kick along the line, never going to get penalised for that. But usually in Geelong actually are under pressure, but they're still flipping the ball around to each other as they normally do. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that confidence in that uh, high possession style of footy remains when the uh, scoreboard remains tight. Just imagine if you were watching at home, you'd think Gilby was an absolute unker. <laughs> Tiller, down goes Callan. Johnson no. knocked out of there by Barco. Well done. Wojcicki's got it from Kelly, but the kick is wide of the mark and bounces through through behind Tim. Last stoppage. June Syracuse is now playing on Ablett. Last stoppage inside the Bulldogs' board line. Gia went away from the stoppage. Ablett had a look at him, then decided to go back to him. So they actually managed to drag Ablett away from that stop play at half forward. Good play by the Bulldogs and turn him into a defender. Callan across the ground. Here's Morris. Now comes very wide. Hill pushing up the ground. Needs to mark it. Didn't. Support comes from Lake. They've got the extra man, but Lake couldn't get it across the hill. Working off the pack was Hargrave. Didn't get there in time. Ablett goes in short. Tiller knocked away. Taken by Eagleton. Gilby. Nice work. Hargrave up towards the wing. Mackey wrestling with Acker. Like a had him by the arm. Yeah, poor option. Uh, he only had to look how wide he had. Hill out to the uh, out to his right and missed him no, heard the umpire so kelly now under pressure no problem he's diving for a mark i can't ping him he's diving for a mark probably could have done that better just stood up off him and just uh tried to keep the ball under ottens winning those taps hacker with ablett we talked about those a couple prior to the game Necker for a very short time had a run with him. Levels had nine, two marks, tackle, couple of contested, so 
He's had a fair influence. Gee, that's a good tap. Wojcicki again providing the run from Ling's handball. Lonigan went early. Lake's been magnificent. Well done. Brilliant he's been. To cross. To Hargrave. Can they hold their nerve? To Gilby. Still with Gilby. And decides that... Uh, <laughs> we'll run it over. And that's the defender's haven. If you try and move it back to that position, you know that you've got the bailout every time. But Lake's ability to shrug that first tackle is what gives the Western Bulldogs a chance to get out of pressure. John Siracusa to Hargrave. The margin is six points, and they've conceded three of the dogs. There's Cross, Eagleton, across the ground, men on. Boyd coming off 33 possessions. He started well again tonight. Eagleton inside the forward 54 kick. Mackey needed to kick it long. Hill was behind his man and peeling off. Some decision back there. Milburn, Harley comes outside the 50. Johnson's got a show here. Knocks it down to his own advantage. Should have hand passed over the top. Harbrow was on. Harbrow looks at him ruefully. Milburn. Little chip outside the defensive 50, Varko. And then Varko on, Mackey providing a lot of runoff half back with a bounce. And Someone's a second. Go to him. So the three bounces, and then the low kick inside. Mooney had a fair bit, couldn't hold it, should have. Gilby, hands and knees, well done. Well done. I reckon John o right now is breathing a sigh of oh, relief. Easy ever. Cross inside. John Siracusa back to cross. Good option this time to Hill. Hill goes back inside. Higgins, Higgins has been very good. Goes to the pocket. Oh, he's done it again. The skipper, how good is he? Just indecision, not giving the first option. Both on a couple of occasions, and that gives the defender enough time to close you down. What a great contest it's been, though. The dogs are looking like cats at the moment. <laughs> Don't confuse me. Taken away by Enright. Good chase. Puts a hand pass away. It does look like Griffin. You're right. There goes Ablett up towards the wing. Lonigan on his chest. That's it. A long way from goal. Lonigan, little chip across the ground. Johnson looks in the rearview mirror. Runs on. What a kick. Telling kick. Beauty. Oh, Mooney dropped it. Hand passes back to Varco. Varco back to Mooney. Callan is closing. Mooney snaps. Hangs a long time in the air. Made for the third man up. Killer dropped it though. Taken by Johnson. Claimed by Hargrave. Back in the ball. He's put it down like that. He only had one hand on it. You could have got rid of it, John. So Minson. And even in that situation, the ability of the dogs to defend and make it hard for the Cats to score, they're the masters of scoring easily in those situations, but they haven't been able to do it. Gene Murphy trying to go over the top. They're field kicking, letting them down here, the dogs. And Milburn back on. Varco, he's had a, a night where almost some very, very good things have happened. He's in the contest. And, and the bottom line for the dogs right now is how long can they keep the pressure up for? Can they go all the way here? Well, it was still a Mooney mistake. I mean, Mooney had the chance of marking the ball 10 metres out and fumbled the mark. So at the moment, the Cats aren't handling the ball really as precisely as they generally do. So Stokes to Mooney. So we haven't had a goal in 13 minutes for either side. And that's Mooney's second mark. He said uh, this, is, this will be his fifth touch for the game. They've, uh, they've just played very well the dogs they've done their homework and they're matched up a lot better in this match than they did uh, in their round 16 encounter 20 seconds now that's it so mooney 49 goals for the season we saw Jono kick his 50th earlier tonight that's the bulldogs Jono, that's not coming back enough. down to you tim if he's just come from the ground and his kicking hasn't been terrific tonight but he's actually performing a really important role. He's playing at centre-half forward. He's been pushing up really high and dragging Tom Harley with him. Now, the catch like Tom Harley being that third man up at the moment, Harley's had his hands full. Selwood lost the footy. Ling goes after it. That kick in. So the dogs initially into trouble, but it's going to work out OK. The spiral from Griffin. One out contest. Well, Hubra took the drama out of it. Enright wasn't aware of that. Slapped it a bit too hard. Did he keep it in? Apparently, Harley back to Enright. 
On the overlap is Hunt. Selwood's been terrific again. Short one. Mackey confronted by Tiller. Looks across the ground. Bartell stretches, takes the mark. Got the loose man in 50 here. Stokes. Stokes is about 60 metres from goal. Barco is on. His man peeled off. And as a result, Hargrave tried to cover the pair of them, found himself in the middle of Varco and Johnson. And really, it was shooting, well, dogs in the barrel. The tackle here by Egerton was fantastic. Generally, Geelong have the strong bodies to be able to control that ball. It's what the dogs have been able to do well. Still, the Cats are having another shot at goal. Johnson then. Exquisite skill. Exquisite skill. Still very much at keeping's off game. I don't know whether the Bulldogs can go with Geelong all night. It's just like a space game. Who can actually use the ball with the time and space? Going from 50 to 50, 24 inside 50 to Geelong, 18 to the Bulldogs. But Geelong just look a little bit more dangerous when they get there. The other thing was too, what, an ex what a very costly slip by Jared Harbrow when they went inside. He was one-on-one, -on -one, only had to hold his feet and keep some pressure on. 100th goal for Johnson since the start of last year. He came into the side and the run began. Mackey, 15 disposals at the moment. He, plenty of it. He's the one getting away, and there's so many ways that Geelong can hurt you on the rebound. Uh, Milburn, Scarlett, Enright, and uh, tonight, Mackey. Oh, contact! Brad Rodden's pushed him off in the face. Play on! Stokes from Ottens, and then caressing the kick. Nick went to oh, early. And then quickly on to a hot spot yeah. at centre half forward. A well done. Han getting across. Eyes for the footy. Used to be a very dangerous play now, up. but to, to yeah. float into that uh, defensive uh, mark now because the forwards can't cream you any longer. Gee, that was clever. Yeah. Tiller to Gourby. And one of the things that Geelong, I mean, one of the many things, they are so hard to score against. Yeah. In the last 12 weeks, the average score against them has been 63 points only. Well, they just choke you down, and they make you hit every target. You make a mistake, that's when they counter punch and really dominate the game. It's been a long time since the Doggies have kicked a goal in this match. In fact, the Cats have kicked the last four. Harbra got it back from Callum. Bursting through his tiller. Look at the goals go. Looking for a goal. <laughs> Down goes Mackey. Grabbed him immediately. Five ball. As no soon as the ball hangs in the air, they, the Geelong defence always looks like they're in control, don't they? They just read the ball so well. Look at Harbrow's effort to run through the Cats then and the sidestep. Uh, brilliant play. Transition from defence to offence was fantastic. Mincy took clean possession there and paid the price. Out of defence, Milburn. Nice kick. Oh, could well be 50. 50 Steve just lets himself down yeah, and can't nice Ryan, second. rather. Steve was his father. Ryan, a step late. There's actually been quite a few of these decisions that have been really close to being given, I reckon, um, with contact yeah. after a mark, but that was blatant. That was uh, There was yeah. no doubt in that. Absolutely. A costly rush of blood. That's your line, Tom. Tom it's a fine line here, between guys. putting that physical pressure on and being able to do what they've done all night and going over the line every now and then. We've seen a, a tackle after disposal, a free kick given against them, one of those. You, ne you nearly need to keep playing on that edge if you're going to be competitive, though. Yep. Well, he hasn't troubled the scorer this season. Nothing. Zippo. 40 metres out. Oh, he's got it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting for the moment on the big stage. Friday night in the final at the MCG. And even the defenders come off after they've kicked a goal. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Tom Harley there. We know that uh, he's got the courage to stand under the ball and take a mark. He usually does it from an opposition kick in the in their defensive 50. But on this occasion, through the corridor, they back this, them, themselves with their selves with skills. They back their teammates to uh, take those contested possessions. It was a good finish, if not wobbly. It's his second score since 2005, and he has done it on the big stage, Ricky. 
Just a small injury concern for Geelong. You see Travis Varco. He's just come off complaining of back tightness. They've just put some strapping on that lower back. With Travis Varco, he really needs a big game. So if Geelong win, they've got Chapman away on the sideline. So he needs a big one. 26 minutes and the Doggies have kicked a goal. Cats have kicked the last five. Otten's becoming very influential. Serwood brilliantly done. And Blake running hard. He's off and gone. Holding the footy. Holding the ball. You're His brain was ticking. But it just had not got to his limbs. <laughs> See what, Brian Lake has played some sort of first half, hasn't he? Also, very good. good. So how can the Dogs conjure a goal? They need something, not that way. Higgins just roughed off at that time from Milburn. Kelly, you just feel like Geelong have got him where they want him again now. For the first time tonight, they had him where they wanted him in round 16, late in the game at Skilled Stadium. Mackie... Well, we'll find out how robust the Western Bulldogs' plans are because uh, they're going to be challenged now. Hudson's hip and shoulder. Rook bouncing back up. Hargrave look away. Griffin's run's going to be so important as this match goes on. Pushes up to the wing, loops it over the top. Hahn, hard against the boundary line. Pressure came from Corey. Kicks inside the forward 50. Just about had those birds. Scarlett gets a hand <laughs> pass away. Wojcinski... Pace required here. The tackle slipped low. That was bad luck for Murphy. It got to him, but it slipped down. And Murphy, as a result of the tackle, is hurt. Wojcinski, a speedster himself. Murphy paying the price. Not safe down there. Meantime, ball is with Rook. Kicks it down towards the 50. Wonderful stuff. Well, I thought it was wonderful. Coming over the top, Harbrow. Able to knock the hand pass away that Stokes had intended for the runner going past Johnson. But it didn't come out too well as far as the dogs were concerned. It came to Bartell, and he's found the man in the pocket. And that's Brad Ottens, who will line up from right on the 50. And this game now in danger of slipping away from the dogs. Bartell's been well held. His uh, opponent is Matthew Boyd. Boyd's had 12, Bartell with 10. But uh, not as influential as he has been in recent weeks. Take a good kick from here. Ottens run right across the face. Hudson mistimed his jump. Forces are behind. I know we harp on it all the time, but it always the rebound out of the uh, Geelong defence. The way the Geelong players, and that's just heavy contact, are prepared to leave their opponent to go and attack the footy and win the loose ball is... Uh, is exceptional. This bloke uh, needs to get into the game. He's only had four touches, Adam Cooney. It's his first touch in this quarter, Ox. Yeah, he, he, look, he came in with an injury, an injury doubt, and maybe proving it. And it probably proves once again, and we saw it last week uh, with uh, some players coming in injured or, you know, not 100%, that you can't carry players in finals if, uh, if they're not 100%. So Blake doing the ruck where Gotten's going forward, and now Bartell. Mooney, oh, not a play. G. Mooney was clever there. So they're almost at the moment the catch forwards. Mooney's almost, Johnson's almost, but uh, Bulldogs just holding them at bay. And that was interesting. They might miss out here. Otten's great handball. Corey, up and under. Selwood kept his head. Enright loads it up. Front spot, Mooney. Morris at the back. Oh. Ottens having a big, big night. Kicks it away. And that's eight individual goal kickers for the Cats. No multiple goal kicker. And that's the problem that the Doggies are having. Whilst uh, they've had some good defenders and they've been in the game, this is where Geelong turned the screws. First five, last five of each quarter. And they, they wear you down and... You can't keep pressure on just for 15 or 20 minutes. It's quarter by quarter, 30 minutes at a time. And they're just dropping off here, the doggies. So the margin, 26 points. Tim? Well, Rook uh, is Bomber Thompson's favourite player, one of his favourite players. Copped a heavy bump then from Hudson. Got up again. They had a bit of a wrestle. Then he chased. Geelong turned the ball over and then he found some space at centre half forward. His work ethic was just phenomenal then. Charging up his Varco. Saw him on the bench down, moments ago. Swing him down, hold the man. Head on by Bozzo. Varco gets the free, lays it off immediately. Selwood has been instrumental. 
In a lot of their good work, here's Corey, who started brilliantly. Eyes like Sharon's. Kicks inside the forward 50. Going backwards, Gilby. They've got trouble. Whoop fell over. Gilby stayed on his feet, and they can see it again. I think this is morale sapping. They've gone backwards a few times down there tonight. Now that's about five force behinds. Out of defence, Cross to midfield and Murphy. Wanted to go on Murphy, but there was not much there. And then Eagleton to Hargrave. Got to keep running hard here, and Cross has done just that. Great collect. Eagleton, he's a left footer. He's on the wrong side with the right. Got a bit on it, but uh, it's Geelong all the way here. Taylor, good effort, Hahn. They just keep playing in front of the Geelong defence, and every time the Bulldogs come through midfield and look up, there's a Geelong player between uh, between them and the nearest Bulldogs player, which is creating that indecision going forward. A lot of cats around the ball here. Corey, it's got a long time. Cooney, Eagleton should kick a goal. Left footer, coming back, gets it. Boy, did they need it. Another good tackle inside uh, offensive 50 for the doggies. They, the ball comes in that quick after a stoppage. You saw the ball go out of bounds. It came in. It gave Geelong a, not a hell of a lot of time to set up. And the doggies, in recent, for the first time really in this quarter, they had more numbers around the contest than what Geelong did. Have a look here. Even Joel Corey there. One of the, the don'ts in football was not to handball into the corridor. Yeah. They do it nearly every time. Mm -hmm. Good snap. 33 minutes between goals for the Bulldogs. Spend more time with the than Al Capone. We're back in the middle. 8-8-5-5. Eight, eight, five, five. Three and a half minutes out from halftime. Terrific bounce. On. on the way down, Blake got it. Ackerman is falling to the ground. Harbrow, two speedsters involved there. Varko affected the kick just inside the forward 50. Hunt with strength. Battling on, though, is Higgins. Higgins has got the football over the top. Enright's got him. And certainly Enright has had a pronounced effect on the efficiency and the ball-getting ability of Sean Higgins. Brad Otten's resting in the forward line. He's been huge. Martin Blake having a run in the middle, but Otten's has been fantastic, cutting off the opposition and kicking goals. Echo, you're under pressure. Well, I just hit Trojan. So Minson to Murphy. Murphy decides just to load up. Dogs with a chance with Hill here. Great contested Ugh. mark. Welsh at the bottom. Tries to get it back out to Tiller. Well done, Harley. Those strong bodies. Johnson, who does it at both ends. He's been down in the back half a few times tonight and squares it up. Stokes, a bit like Johnson. He can uh, be at this end one moment and kicking a goal within a minute or two of the other. Milburn. What the dogs were able to do really well then is even though the cats switch the ball, they're still man on man. Their uh, their defence and the on the transition has been very good out of their forward line. That's it, Robert, Robert. Ablett. Just a bit like Bartell. I mean they're 12 and 11 respectively, not huge numbers for either of them. Stokes, here he is, into an attacking position. And the look away handball, Rook just went to the wrong spot, trying to help him out. Gilby. Cross, busy, Ackermanis, back inside, John Syracuse, a good kick, Murphy getting busier, Acker running hard, does Murphy go to him? Now well, that's the third time tonight, but the kick hasn't been good from Murphy, Corey, back to Scarlett. Speaking of Cross, that in possession so far, the fellow, his terrific performance, 38. A couple of weeks back, Joel Corey racking them up to through midfield. Ottens is down there, step to step with Lake. Plenty of support for the dogs behind. They'll suddenly need it. Callan put the body in. It was. And they needed it. Lake running the outer side. Not filling everybody with confidence. Goes short. Hill. Short one down towards half forward. They'd love a late goal. Murphy, not the best of nights. Kicks inside the forward 50. Hahn dropped it. Out of bounds. But that's the way they have to go into the forward footage to movement. As soon as they turn and go long and high, it's closing Geelong sense. They've got to look for the Bulldogs player moving the space, even though it's probably going to be out a bit wider. Blake is able to get Minson out of position. And Minson has a second crack. Corey. And his pants pulled down. But uh, he's done everything else right. Good tackle, good tackle. Taylor. Harley. 
on the line. Back to Murphy. Murphy, Eagleton, who, who got that goal. And then Eagleton quickly on, just blazed away. Scarlett, head over the footy, tucks it under the arm, takes them on. Great play. Magnificent kick to Lonigan, and then Lonigan on to half forward. Mooney, the target. Morris done a good job. In fact, Morris and Lake have been very good. Mooney, I think he might have uh, legged uh, Hargrave there. Cooney, he's had a quiet one, gets a free kick. And 50, you jumped into his back. Let it go, Brian. 50 metres, let's go. You jumped into his back well, unnecessarily. Get one last crack here. Well, they go inside. They'll have 30 odd seconds to do so, but Geelong, it'll give Geelong enough time to get their numbers back. It's crucial uh, how they use his footy. Got a few spare numbers back. So Cooney short now. Eagleton normally a good kick. One last chance. High kick. Hill. Heels the goal. Went very early. Higgins over the back. Geelong now. Milburn. Blake. And then Blake down the line. And Geelong hold them off. Been terrific, Corey. Hacker kicked a first half goal in the opening term. John Siracusa, Ablett, been quiet, not appreciating the attention as we go into the halftime break. So, 21 point game, Minson gets involved. Ablett and Minson, and now Ling coming in as a protector. So, Cats with a big lead, but Bulldogs still with a buck, you'd reckon, here at halftime. It's 56 to 35 in the preliminary final, grand final at stake for the winner. And this is finals footy. Ricky, what about the Bulldogs? Well, the theme going to their final series was don't die with the music still inside you. And that's what Rocket E would have revisited at halftime. It's all about belief. As soon as they start losing belief in themselves, that's when the game will be lost. Thanks, Rick. Second half begins then. Cats lead it by 21 points. Ottens again decisively into the path of Ling. It spills out the back. Ackermanis tackled by Ottens. Second effort. And that's, we talk about Ruckman doing that. Ben Hudson traditionally as a bloke follows up, lays that tackle, gets involved in that next contest. Brad Ottens is brilliant at it. Hudson just three possessions tonight. Ottens dominating the taps. Bartell aided by Ottens' tap. Ablett on the run, the back end of the centre square, back to Bartell, draws a man, goes to Ling, they create some space, Hunt takes it at them then, that searching, searing hand pass forward, Corey, beautiful kick, a fine mark taken by Mooney, why did he do that, played on, well that's why he did that, trying to get traction was Marco, and he's marked directly in front, 30 metres out. And the play that we saw there from Geelong in the middle is exactly what makes them so good. Gary Ablett didn't panic. He didn't have an option to go to. So rather than bomb it into an area where they had a numbers disadvantage, they just played with the ball across the middle of the field there until they had someone running forward. Joel Corey spat out, hit Mooney, and Mooney found uh, Varko with a nice pass. So Varko, big kick for him. We saw Chapman moments ago. Varko holds up his end of the bargain. That really was a case of being under intense pressures. Bucks mentioned that the ability to be composed under pressure, almost a half turnover when Ablett hand passed it and it went to ground. But they just have this fantastic ability to push back to assist each other. But they'll always have someone who seems to be out in the clear, which was called. And it all started from Watkins' tackle. Yeah, yeah, Agra was away, stops the tackle, all of a sudden they've got a stoppage back in their terms. Lisa Jones there with an old uh, player of yours, uh, Lee. Marty yep. Pask. So look at the marks inside 50 for the Dogs. They took four the last time they played them in round 16. They've got two so far tonight. And on July took 24. So they're, they're on right now. on target. Yeah, 12 to 2. Bucks, you're good at arithmetic. That's half, isn't it? <laughs> so Cross and Kelly and Ackermanis. Well, that result was a, a 10 goal win to Geelong. So if that. Uh, ratio maintains, you'd think that you'd see the same result. Agamenis quickly to centre half forward. Milburn probably being held on to. In right, slap away handball. Murphy, terrific. Can't quite get it to Cooney. He started forward in this half on Harley. Back to Murphy. Put him under the pump. 
And then Hunt, big and fantastic. strong. And then to Ablett on the burst. For the first time, really, tonight, creating to Johnson. Good guy to give it to, but he misses Varko. Lonigan goes back inside. Johnson can't quite go. Oh, you took him on, Jono. You took him on. Well, you know, your hands were free initially. Yeah, I reckon he had one arm free. He saw the player. Yeah, and he was prepared to take himself. the tackle and risk the yeah. holding the ball. Hargrave went back to this man, Akamanis. They've got the spare man on this side. Lake has been terrific. Had nothing up forward, though. Goes with the outside of the boot, but doesn't get the angle right. Lonigan takes the mark forward of the ring. Plans the call. Empire Vaza, just 15 metres away, Ablett, Bartell, they're looking ominous now, Bartell inside the forward 50, coming up was Mooney, Hargrave knocked it away, Ling tried to clear a passage, Akamenis went back, Lake, they work it out, Pressure. Callum working a little one-two with Cross in the pocket, comes off, Callum drives it towards the other side, half-back flat, hands in the back. Johnson gets a free kick. I think it's pretty evident that the Cats have taken it up an extra peg. It's just a matter of whether the Dogs can stay with them in the next five, because otherwise they'll be out of the contest. So the two most experienced players combining there. Acker getting it from uh, Johnson, and then Johnson goes a good mark. Interesting, Cooney's gone into the forward line, but Lynch stayed in the middle, middle yeah. of the ground. Harley's picking him up there, yeah. yeah. So far from fully fit, talked about the problems he's had prior to the match and it's been a tough week for him. Just no movement at all by the doggies, the stationary, just uh, waiting for something to happen. Good Mark Johnson. It might be a confidence booster for not only Brad Johnson but also the doggies, he's been pretty quiet. Murphy's had a fair bit of the ball. They've got 17 players back here, Geelong, in the Bulldogs' forward 50. And Camerini here in the centre circle is the uh, the closest Geelong player to their goal. Well, they're playing patiently. Can they make it work? They've conceded about 70 or 80 metres here. Gilby, normally good with the ball. Lake's been very good. Griffin's a runner, but he's in a tight spot. He realises that and comes back to Gilby right on the wing. I'll be happy with the ball in his hands. He'll pick a target. 62, plays 35. Going to have to be patient. A lot of players to pull to the ball. He goes for distance across the ground. Controlled by Tiller. Short one to Callan is on. Pulls it back towards the middle, taken by Boyd. This doesn't, really, build up. this doesn't really hurt the dogs because it takes the sting out of the Cats' offence. Uh, they've just got to take advantage of it with this next kick. Callum, that's a nice kick. Welsh on the lead. A long way from home. Griffin over the back. He's calling for it long. So Welsh, 55 metres out. We'll kick from 60. He's kicked, this. This. He's kicked a seven if against he wasn't the in Cats. It, Lake's uh, actually come down behind the players. Cooney. This is the target. Well, after all of that, you handle the ball a lot and mistakes are apt to happen. That's still better than a turnover in that part of the ground to give Geelong the footy. At least they get a 50-50 ball in their forward half. Ottens and uh, Hudson Ottens won it. Mm. With the tackle. No, not continuous. After the ball came out, you threw in the ground. Yeah, I know, I know. So Bartell. Bartell and Ablett. Well held in the first it's half. A great kick. So that's dangerous because they are um, just great accumulators and they hurt you so much. That one from Mackey missing the target. Gilby charging onto it. Quickly saw Griffin. Now does he go on and kick the goal? Well, he's got to take the mark first. Does he takes Mackey on now? Kick to the back. Cooney getting back. Milburn trying oh. to concede. Higgins can he get up and kick the goal? Oh. No. Behind. Just enormous pressure there. And Griffin dropped an easy mark, probably ended up costing them a shot of goal. You've got to take your chances. Yeah, you do. That relayed turf is causing them a few concerns at both ends. Ablett, Johnson, took a while. Boyd went in, took the ball off him. 
Sell one of close quarters. I oh, know oh, you did it. One hand throw only. Perfect angle on it. Mitch Hahn, Mitch Hahn. Back, match, match. And Barbazzo giving himself a wrap. He was in perfect position, he says. G. Rook was good then. He just held the ball up long enough to stop the Bulldogs getting it and getting it inside 50 really quickly. Hahn into Mines. Goes for distance. Hill out of the contest and good use on the ground of the body by so, his man. Hands. That was terrific. Harley, Enright, Varko to midfield. Ooh, Mackie caught one high. I'm reporting you for, reporting you for up conduct. I understand. Let it go, Joel! So Hill is on report. He had a run at that last pack in the square, but was beautifully blocked. Well, I don't reckon he's got a nasty bone in his body, Josh Hill, but... Um, I reckon he realised and then he tried to pull out to and it was too late. Mackie DeVarco to Johnson. Johnson's left foot kick, Lonigan the target. Well, we've talked a lot about Lake's effort tonight. And he's... Uh, well, he had to fight back because last week Barry Hall had the better of him for most of the night and it was only... The fact that the ball didn't get inside 50 for the Swan is that uh, he probably wasn't hurt. Had some words spoken to him and he's, um, he's responded really well. Ooh. Gilby playing that quarterback role. He's trying to get a pass, Varco. Couldn't quite do it. He was trying to get to Murphy. And then Enright's clever kick to Kelly. Releases him and half forward. Selwood is just so good. He's a remarkable young player. And just doesn't stop working. He pushes his body until... He can't run anymore, and you'll see when he comes off, he's down on his haunches. He just didn't stop. And this was a, uh, a great intercept here by Barco. They've done that very well all night. Selwood's had seven contested possessions. He uh, leads all comers in that category on the field, and it is amazing for such a young player. It's a kick, and just missing, so... Could have been their 10th uh, individual goal yeah. kicker if he had have made that. And they're hanging on just, aren't they, the yeah, Bulldogs? Feel, you feel the Bulldogs have really had a pretty dominant five minutes, but they've got one rush behind. There's Gilby. Interesting with Joel Selwood. We were talking about Joel Corey before. Possessions against the clock. Selwood third best in the league. A possession every three minutes, 40 seconds. And pretty much on track tonight. Hunt with Dash comes through, feeds it forward. Ablett, 60 metres out, blocking. Back to the boundary, hunted run on, little chip. No good. Thank you for Brian Lake, otherwise the Dodgers would be about uh, seven or eight goals down. Best and fairest last season is Brian Harris. Shades of Renee Richards, just outside the defensive 50. Under pressure, bounced along the boundary there by Morris, or was it Boyd? It was Boyd, little hand pass from Bartell to Mackey. Now an opportunity for Lonigan, a centering kick. Under the football there was Kelly. Ablett, wonderful balance, he slipped, but he retained control of the football. The kick down towards full forward from Corey was touched. It's a, uh, it's a bad break for the Dogs and for Tim Callum. A full touch. It was touched off the boot. Thank you. Stokes had actually moved out to open space here. I thought Corey would have used him in the uh, right hand, uh, top right hand forward pocket, but don't usually see them snap the ball like that into that area. Gee, Johnson took a chance there, but he got away and did well. Chiller. Well, Geelong have got a, a wall set up. Yeah, they have. Hunt. It's so hard to penetrate unless you're willing to take the game on and take a risk. Mackie to Scarlett's turn it over. Minson, who had such a good third quarter, remember last week against the Swans. Little one, Johnson, quickly on. Now, can they run here? Across a lot of the ball. He's got Acker very short. Goes inside. Gets it to Higgins, who started this match brilliantly. And then Higgins, a lovely kick. Harbrow's got it. It's Harry Taylor. Harry, you took his arm. And you weren't watching the footy, mate. He actually took his arm, and you're not watching the footy, so it's got to be a free kick. Gee, I reckon that was a bit lucky. It's, 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 First time they continuous quick movement by the dogs from one end to the other in a long, long time. Actually, what happened, the uh, Geelong defence got up into the middle of the ground, but when Scarlett missed the target in the forward 50, that's the only time that uh, really the Bulls were able to run it down the wing and get behind their defence. He definitely chopped the arm. It was it was slight, but uh, yeah, it was there. So this absolutely a must-go. 
and gets it home. So the dog's hanging in, not going away. I reckon if Rocket Eat had a said to the boys uh, before the game that we'd have that uh, Barto would be kept pretty quiet, Gary Ablett would be kept pretty tight, uh, quiet. The runoff half back by the Cats, you know, we keep that relatively quiet that they'd be right in it, but the dominance by the Cats has still been, uh, been that great. But at the same time, they've only scored nine goals against them, and uh, I think that would be the pleasing thing for, for Rodney. Two goals in the last 50 minutes of play. MCG Friday night, first preliminary final. The winner of this one to play the winner of the Hawks in St Kilda, who play tomorrow night. Bounce favours Minson, who punches it out wide. In front was Corey, as you can see. Ball went behind him. Eagleton. Ball up. Akamanis. 11 possessions so far. He's done some good things. Nice left foot goal. Blake and Minson. Griffin, a sense of humour, just knocks it back in there. Boyd, taken down by Bartell. A jumping Blake gets it out. Harley gave it to Taylor. Selwood again. Works so hard, does it all. In close and then spreads quickly. Comes to Stokes. They've always got someone moving for them, the Cats. Stokes, Mooney, got separation, ran hard, 60 metres out, trying to lob it to Ablett, don't get it there, Morris takes the mark, a chance now for the Dogs to build from the back, Lake, Gilby, needs some hard running, John Syracuse coming at it, not hard enough, Mackey made ground as they went to the ball, Rook came from behind, Mackey, a lot of the ball, lays it off. Rook on the overlap with Jinsky. Goes long down towards full forward. Lake can't get back to affect the contest. Oh, well, well done, Hargrave. She's had last kick into the forward line. Hasn't been good for Geelong in the last 10 minutes. They've turned the ball over three times doing that. Well, Griffin set a task here. Chance on Hardbrow. It's across to Griffin running hard with a bounce. Goes back to Cooney. Normally a good kick. Goes wide. Good one. Higgins off, Cooney, Campbell over the top, big kick this Harbrow, very big kick, he's got it, they're close enough you reckon. And it's the outer wing, it's the outer wing where they're doing the damage, but it's coming from Hargraves and also Blake in defence. That they're the, lead, they're the ones lead that are actually giving them the drive and telling the players in front of them, run, we'll get the ball out to you. Well, we've been applauding uh, rightly the Geelong defence, but the Bulldogs' uh, back half has been fantastic. They've intercepted the ball. Geelong have been a bit sloppy on their uh, disposal into the forward 50, creates the turnovers and the rebound. Well, a favourite son, Dougie Hawk, and she had Hargrave's ability to win the one on one a moment ago was just so big, wasn't it? How big is the next goal in this match right now? Huge. The next, the next uh, centre clearance is very important also. Harbrow with back-to-back -back goals, then Minson falling to the ground. Boyd, smothered by Blake, came back to him. Hacks his way through. Home passes down towards half forward. Harley wanted it most. Stokes goes to the outer side. Selwood again, splitting. Just running hard to position. Goes inside the forward 50. Johnson... Free kick against free kick. him. Oh. Not realistic, John. I'm not realistic. To the line, Matthew. Gee, sorry, Dennis, that's a big call saying not realistic. So this is the again. They're going again here. <laughs> Teller on the other side wing. Boyd. Been important in the last few minutes. On the bounce to Murphy. Sweeping hand pass. Got it away. They run it up the ground. Morris Harbrow. He's been so instrumental. Got it back there from John Syracuse. Johnson. Almost unrealistic, got a hand to it. Push in the back, was it? Mackey, like a spring heel jack. Cooney's got it. Johnson wants it. Goes to the middle. Wing just lurking, and that was careless. Wow. And unrealistic. No, 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 no. Here, John, here. If it had been Ben Hudson, he might have been a chance, but... It was just unlucky. He just... The ball just came that six inches too high, and instead of being able to take the... Uh, 
mark on the jump. He went uh, obviously clearly. Doesn't help when your bloke in front of you folds like a deck of cards. <laughs> I'm not happy. The coach. Oh. And the other coach won't be happy either. Didn't get the distance. Well, that's why he won't be happy because you've got to always have someone on your line as a safety. You, when the moment comes, you've got to take it. You've got to seize it. He obviously had other things in his mind if he couldn't oh. cover 40 metres. Dangerous kick into the centre half back. Harbour again. Gee, he's had five minutes of footy, hasn't he? Well, well, he's turned it on. Down to you, Tim. I've just been watching Gary Ablett for the last uh, seven or so minutes, and there's not a lot of energy in his performance. In fact, there's a lot of Cats players at the moment that are not showing a lot of energy. I think that would be the most worrying concern now for Bomber Thompson in the early part of this third term. He got a kick. It came off his knee. No, he actually got a kick. It came off his knee. It's been a long time since Geelong have really been challenged coming towards the end of a match. And you sense they're feeling under pressure. Not only is the scoreboard close, but the, uh, the pressure is on them. The other thing with Geelong, it's been a long time since a loss would really hurt them. Mm. <laughs> it's all perception, though, because they were 15 points up at three-quarter time when these two sides last met. It's 15 points at the moment, but yeah. you've just got the feeling that the momentum is with the Bulldogs. Good point. Because the scores were... Le and Boyd, for the second time, takes it out. Scores, of course, were level at half-time down there that day. And 21 points here. Taylor's kick, not great. Hargrave's got it. That's a mark! Right through. No, we're marked. You marked it clearly. Gee, the no, no, wait, wait. He's going to go on hard. Yeah, this would take his absolute best, Bruce. From when Geelong kicked the first goal of this quarter, we saw the Western Bulldogs slow it down, control the tempo. They took the sting out of Geelong's offence. Geelong got behind the ball. The Bulldogs have been able to win at clearances since then. They're back in the game. So Hargrave giving it everything he's got. Otten's over the back. Hard. Can't quite get a kick in. And Harley runs it over the line. That was pretty tentative, wasn't it, by Geelong? I think, Bruce, you're right. When you know that if you lose that game, that's it. It definitely gives Geelong. you uh, something different to think about. Geelong don't change their style, though. They're ready to move it on. Bartel gives it away, though. Going back to Jan Siracusa. That last long ball going in from the Dogs. A lot of reaching from the Cats, but really no one taking control. No one intent on destruction, making sure it was killed. Jan Siracusa... Well, put a teammate under pressure, Cross went back to him. Now Eagleton. Don't mind this, this is trying to create something, trying to get Geelong out of their comfort zone to try and drag them up. And they so they've got some space. Boyd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's just got to get it over the bloke in front of him. Because that's what he struggled with all night, Robert Murphy. Four or five times in the man on the mark. 70 metres from goal. Oh, no, nothing there, you just took the Eagleton. Kicks inside the forward 50. Minson! Well, as he did last week. A strong mark on the forward line. Umpire Bozzo is going off about some bad acting down there. It's the second time tonight he hasn't been impressed with players playing for free kicks. Bad news for Kevin Costner, who'll never get another free kick. <laughs> it was a lot better kick by Eagle than that time than, he, than three minutes ago having a shot for goal. It opens up the fat side. And the, the other positive thing for that, he's up against quality opposition there in Brad Alton, so he tried everything Great. to get it away from him, but it's stuck. Great pluck. Boy, he's a very, yeah, boy, very you're looking nervous, Ox. It's a very straight kick. Will Minson trying to work it back kicks it behind 17 8 from set shots now for the big man hard enough to get the shots but the ability to convert or not convert it's just so critical in the end result well geelong have kicked one one in this quarter and the doggies have kicked two three so five scoring shots to two mooney's just come onto the ground His programming hasn't been quite right tonight, Mooney, has he? He's made some strange choice. I know he plays on at all costs at times, but it hasn't always worked. Enright loads it up. First time they've been forward for a bit. Lonigan. Tiller. He's in trouble, I think. No chance. What has happened, the way the Bulldogs have been able to chip the ball around the middle of the ground when they're in possession going forward, they're in good position to defend the Geelong rebound. So Geelong really aren't getting any real uh, flow out of their back 50 when the ball does uh, get dispossessed in there. This is a big uh, clearance right here. Ottens wraps up Minson and lays it down. John Siracusa and Johnson for a boundary throw. 
lot of hard work in those ruck exchanges now. Both the guys adopting the Larry Craig approach. A big wide stance. Knocked down Minson. by Minson, and he's going to get a free kick as well. Good decision. Just popped in front, and again, it was all about strength. Just pops it over the top. Callan's on the run then. If you think back to last season, Geelong almost faltered in the preliminary final. And tonight again, being tested. Wonderful opportunity here. Hahn goes in. He got it from Murphy, and he misses to the right-hand side. Gee whiz. Well, they're giving them chances here. Haven't taken them yet, but the no. pressure's on. Gee, Bucks, got to ask you... To... I'll get to you in a sec. Well, Jinsky, I mean, just from last year when you did make them very, very nervous in that match, Collingwood. Varco, lovely kick. Yeah, there's the difference. Hahn running into an open goal at one end and then Geelong banging it back. And suddenly there'll be a three-goal game. Well, it always looks a lot different from this side of the fence than it does from that, as we see Varco with a great, uh, <laughs> with a great kick over the top to Mooney. But thing they were able to do last year was get the, the goals in key moments when they were tested most. What are you laughing at? <laughs> it just felt like an air traffic controller. <laughs> Mooney gets an important goal for the Cats. His 50th for the season. And all individual goal kickers for the Cats. Mo Mooney's looked dangerous at times, but as you said, Bruce, just uh, making some silly mistakes. We'll see the reactions here of both coaches. There he goes, Bomber Thompson he saying, goes hooray because thank you, get it in quick and we're half a chance. Because the last three or four entries, they've given it straight to the dogs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Rocket obviously the saw, no, nah, not happy with that. But you roll the dice. In the previous 23 minutes, the dogs had scored two four to a behind. Have they blown it, Tim? Issued there by Johnson while Mooney was kicking for goal. He moved right up the ground. He spoke to all the other Bulldog players around the midfield. Terrific stuff. So the dogs with the work to do again. Bartel being held. All of his jumper, Geelong free kick. Got a handful of jumper. They Jimmy Bartel, he's lifted in this turn. Hasn't yeah. that been a great battle, Bartel and Boyd? Two outstanding players. Well, I think Boyd's stocks have really risen in the second half of this year. He's He's starting to get the respect that he deserves off a lot of uh, the opposition clubs. Hunt came up to Boyd, then sent it back to Bartel. Not too convincing. Oh. Bartel goes out wide. This is Harley. Well, That's better. 69-51. Approaching three-quarter time. Running hard is Mooney. Step for step. Doing a great job was Morris. Having to get a fist in there and knocks it out of bounds. And have a look where that ball went. Five metres from the boundary line, 70 metres out from goal. Not usually where Geelong kicked the ball going forward. Gee, the Ruckman working hard. They had to sprint to get to the contest. Cross and Selwood. That would be a main event in most stadiums around the world. Well, Cross has had 26. Selwood just going along beautifully with 18. Mackey, 24. He's been very good off halfback. Cotton's at the back and then does the roving to Ablett. And he was able to get away from John Siracusa despite the tackle. But the tackle put him under pressure with a kick. He just doesn't, he doesn't go to ground when he's taken. That's the hardest thing. You've got to nullify him. Very tough because his centre of gravity is so good. Ottens took it out of the air, gave it back to Ablett. Look away, handball to Hunt. Kick to uh, centre half forward. Now late getting back. Over the top. Gilby. Goes the short option. Well, the one thing they can't do here, Bucks, is concede a goal. No, and they'll uh, they'll try and chew up this time because uh, they'll just try and control it. The They've actually uh, dominated possession this quarter, 102 to 76 against the Geelong side that we know is a high possession uh, team. Throw the ball around. They've only had 76 touches this quarter. The Cats. Well, kicks to a contest. So Geelong with a chance to get it back here. Ottens has been the dominant big man. He's had the measure of uh, Hudson. They got time for one last. Is it a Johnson free kick? No. Ablett descending on it. Brilliant pick up. Got hold of him. Over the top. Gets it to Selwood. Selwood for goal. It's close. The siren sounds. It's no score. Wow. 
himself that he's unbelievable. That's, Lee, that's, that's the second yeah. mark that Lonergan's taken after a sign. Lee, in a word, are the doggies close enough? They're a chance. OK, they're a chance. It's 69 to 51. The super coach has told us they're a chance. Finals footy, the G prelim final. Grand final beckons to start for the final turn. 18 he points the margin. The, the ball and ran straight into it. Fly on! Free kick to Blake. Out to Ling. Ablett turns around, confronted by Gilby. Wonderful skill, though. Get across to Stokes. Pops it up. Great courage by Hargrave. Eyes only for the football. I reckon Rocket wouldn't have been too happy with Ben Hudson there. The first contest, you want to make it a good one, not to give away a free kick. Callan. Running from half back, Boyd, Hudson, Callan runs on, grew up and played for the Cats. 15 games, Akamanis has got it now. Kicks inside the forward 50, very wide. Hahn tracks it out towards the boundary. Missed an important chance in that last turn. Tries to hand pass to his own advantage. Milburn looking for a free kick. Pulled away by Wojcinski. Great work by Hahn, dragged him down, affected the hand pass. And it's out of bounds. Well, Timmy Cullen's bit of play through here. The ability to get the ball through the centre corridor was brilliant. Wojcinski there, just desperation to wedge the ball free. And Wojcinski again getting the first hands there. Bartel, clever handball. Varko, Rook, back inside to Johnson. He did dive. Cooney, has he got one big quarter in him? Kick by Tiller, Boyd not quite. Gilby very important in that third quarter. Callum squares it. Murphy, every entry here important for the dogs. Good kick by Murphy. Cross. Can he deliver it? Boyd waiting. Got him. Well, he needed a big vertical leap there. He's in the contest. He's in the contest. Can he go all the way here, Ox? He can. He can. He's a good kick. Gee, they're good cross and Boyd, aren't they? Yeah. The two of them. Well, it's a changing in the guard, isn't it? We've seen Scott West being in there for so long. Uh, he's you know, near the end of his career and needing someone to step up. These two are really putting their hands up. Doesn't have a lot of shots for goal. Just five this year, and that's a shocker. So Eagleton, Hahn, Minson all miss in the third term. Boyd misses a 50-50 shot, you'd reckon. And you don't get all, if you kick the goals, you don't get all of those because uh, I think the three shots they had in the third quarter were one after the other because of points. But four, four good finishes makes a massive difference to that result. They, should, they really should be right up there. That's level right. with Geelong. Can't be disheartened though. Here's Bartel. Big second half so far. Goes across the ground. A telling effect. Corey's got it. Corey corralled by Griffin. Nothing on down the ground. Players trying to get across to help. Mackey the first to arrive. Scarlett is it right half back. Now he's away, bouncing up towards the ring. I tell you what, we do need a scarecrow. The ball goes down towards <laughs> half forward. Working at the back, this is Mooney. Just lays it off. Now Blake assesses what's up ahead, but the kick, unfortunately, wide of the mark, intended for Ablett. Nice little one-two in the pocket. Morris combining with Akamanis. And now White gets it back from Callum. Drives to the other side. That's productive. Harbra, big third term, back-to-back -back goals. Will take his man on. Bounces off Scarlett. Runs down towards left half forward. Long kick. That could be inspirational. Bounces off the head of Blake. Loose ball 20 metres out. Taken there is Welsh. Welsh. Holding the crazed tuba player. You dragged it Doesn't in. Get him the ball is there and you dragged it in. I reckon if you're Bulldog supporter, they look fresher. They just look they like do. they're running a bit better on the spread. Wojcinski, good pick up. Hardbrow, so important in the second half. Wojcinski banging it to Ottens. Morris and Lake have been a wonderful team. Ackerman has kept it in. Ablett gone, holding the foot. He looks tall, but he's one player that just that doesn't look like he's got his general zip that, he's, that, he, uh, that explosion to get away from his opponent. I think one of the things they do so well is they're efficient in their use. It doesn't look like they're efficient at the moment. It looks like they're taking it because of that. Jihan's on here. Murphy can get it to him. It's a 50-50 now. Han did well. Does he get back quickly enough? Pressure coming from Corey. Too well done, Corey. Well, the other one was he needed more support by Murphy and, Mur and uh, or by Cross. Cross just couldn't get there. He'd worked so hard back up the other end of the ground. 
Hudson and Blake. Corey, Bartell, Harley. Nothing to go to. Three of the seven All-Australians out there from this season. Ling, who was one of those last year. Back to Bartell. Had to be careful with the kick. It's a good one, though. Wojcinski hasn't played an AFL match since round 15. He's been good. It's hard to say, but whenever they're in this situation, the Geelong play always wants to come back to the middle. Sometimes you've got to run hard to that outside space. Well, they're all in the corridor now. Yeah. So Ablett with the decision to make here. Drives it long down towards half forward in front. Mooney could have been held. No free kick. Callan did well, been but the arms count. free. Gilby gave it across. Cooney to the run of Griffin. Higgins is their there. destiny up ahead for the Western Bulldogs? They're playing like there is. Murphy goes inside the forward 50. Spills behind. Cross falling to the ground. Did brilliantly. Harbrow gets a hand pass away. Griffin the fumble. In there working hard is Milburn. Trying to feed it out. Or is he? He's in trouble here. He's Over in the trouble. Top Minson oh. holding the ball. And that the kick. biggest call of the game. Sometimes it helps you when the umpire can see and sometimes it doesn't. There it is. Okay. Big Will. According to the rules, I think that's a correct call. Yep. There was a lot of effort coming from Milburn, but not much intent. Hasn't been his best night for Milburn. He's only had the 10 touches. Yes, touched up early. Minson from right on the 50. And what's he done? He's hung it out to the right. Well, we've talked about the shots for goal to the other guy, Ox, and you've been part of the four. And Scott, Scotty Ross just has not been able to contribute at all so far tonight. Nothing from him at all. Varko cleverly. Oh, she was Mooney being held on to, and then Hargrave. Umpire letting it roll here. He got the ball. No, he actually got the ball. He's left this, got the ball, mate. Perfect. Oh, and a great, a great strength of Geelong throughout the season has been their ability to use the ball well going forward. They just haven't been efficient with that tonight. The Bull, Bulldogs have been able to turn them over across their half-back line here, and they've attacked with gusto. And he'll be so right. And well, Bucks Hill won a lot of one-on-ones of the defenders yeah. tonight, haven't they? They've been great. Certainly Lake and Morris and Hargrave and Tiller. I mean, we're talking about a side that's still three goals behind, but yep. uh, they look like... Yeah, if they can just kick straight, they're every chance. So, Gilby, Johnson going early, Hunt, Cooney, but Geelong with plenty of numbers. Mackie's been fantastic. Back to Blake, back to Mackie. See, this first goal in the last quarter will tell a tale. I mean, Geelong, like, Geelong will win if they get the first goal, there's no like, question. It's been like that for a lot of quarters, though, uh, for the first three quarters. Oh! oh. She given a bit of a license, and then Milburn takes a couple on. Then Mackie can't quite get a handle on it. Wojcinski, big play coming up here. 50-50 ball, Kelly, well done. Johnson, and then on the up. Johnson goes to ground, hasn't had a good night. But the dogs around the football. See, they're working hard at the present time. Higgins was wonderful moments ago. That chase, Callum, needed to be careful. Ablett surrounded, still working. The football could have been taken high. Bounces to his feet, and that ball's not coming out. Have a look at the dogs in that contest. They're six to two. Generally, it's the cats that outnumber their opposition, but the Bulldogs are running harder, and there's no doubt they're fresh away. They're just said. Looking, looking lively, but they just can't crack that the defence yet. Well, that can happen when you have a week off. You, you lose that spark that you've had all season. You're not used to having a week's rest. Akamanis kicks inside the half for the Bulldogs then. And this kick from Higgins is not going to work out too badly. Johnson out number two on one down there, and they get a boundary throw in. So a stoppage here. And Mark Thompson, more to contemplate the noble. No Rockman there either. Throw it in, Johnson, hands to it, comes behind Over Cooney. Oh, the took it out of the rock. Tell you one thing about the four boundary umpires, he's going to need two Rockmen every 22. Took. Hard work for the Rockman. Well, took what's this? Does anyone spoke. touch it? And Jono says he did, oh, probably did. Yeah, yes. Here's Rook. To Varco. 
Silwood's just come off the interchange, runs outside him now. Varko goes down the line of the pocket. Well done. Mooney. Good to keep his feet then, Mooney. And then Mooney goes short, Johnson. So creative here, but as Dennis said, uh, not always worked out for him tonight. John Siracusa to Hargrave, and he has to load it up now. Hill hasn't really been able to take one tonight. That was a one-handed effort, not quite strong enough there. He was in the box seat. He's the only teenager out there tonight for either team. Well, no Ruckman here for the Cats. Yes. The four boundary umpires are sorting these two teams out a little bit. Well, after, after a big final and all of a sudden you get very tired, those quick throw-ins become very crucial. Robert Murphy's the one for the Dogs. He's had 20 touches, taken 13 marks. He's off having a spell at the moment. His neck, when he gets on the five minutes period from when he gets on the field will be crucial because he can be that link player across half forward that can make all the difference. And that bloke, yeah. he's getting a bit nervous, I reckon. A penny for his thoughts. A nervous cat. As the ball goes inside the forward 50. Once again, it will be repelled. Morris across the ground to Johnson. Oh. No free kick. That's going to be contentious. Lonigan, Rook, Johnson is down. Hurt goal. And that hurts the Bulldogs. Well, that was courage personified. I think. We'll have to look at the replay, but I reckon Rook had his eyes on the ball the whole way. Perhaps Ooh. not. No, perhaps, perhaps not. not. And that's the key to it. If Rook's got his both guys out the eyes of the ball, you can do that. Yeah. But I think Rook was just a little bit late. He was. That, that was a miss one. And yeah. that, uh, that's hurt the dogs. It's a big call. Still, you take your breaks, and Rook was able to get up from that head clash. And take advantage of he's such a tough player but uh, umpire assisted there i reckon wow that's why looks in their team and he that's why they always pick him yeah. so geelong to a four goal advantage here does that free them up can the dogs come one more time they just haven't been able to get the scoreboard going kelly Inside the 50, their defence has been brilliant. Callan's played a wonderful game against his old team. Hargrave, and here is Murphy on the ground. Matt Key threw it away. Oh. Oh, nice track. Oh. <laughs> Nothing to go to, though. You'll have to just hold it up. Big wheels in the centre of the ground. So he runs the ball, John Siracusa. He's going to go to Eagledon. And Eagleton well, quickly on a hill again the target. Now can Welsh impose himself at all here? Hahn almost. Higgins couldn't quite get it out. Resolute defending. Wojcicki's tucked it back in. No ball went out. You dragged it back into it underneath him, Sean. You heard the explanation. There's the captain. And he will be sore in more ways than one, you'd reckon, right now. Ackermanis missed the football. Harley. Hand passes Goldwood. Harbrow is lurking, but it's not back across the line. This is where the Geelong Blacks should be spreading and running, but they're just still in the centre corridor. Yeah. They really are looking very fatigued. What a huge call that last goal was, or non-call. Bartell. That's a good kick. What a beauty. Barton's been splendid. Taylor goes down towards half forward. Some hanging on. Monaghan should have got a free, as it was, robbed by Lake. And then Rook arrived to pick his pocket. Lonigan's in trouble. Back to Rook. Gotten to his move early. Strong tackle. Lonigan taken by Gilby. Forced the error. Minson's got it. Harbrow almost in the grasp. Gilby. Advantage is paid. Tumbles one inside the forward 50. Scarlett takes on the tackler. Sold Selwood into trouble. Opportunity for Wells. Scarlett kick coming. And knocks it out of bounds. What a great final. Tough, hard, contested footy. Minson and Ottens, Eagleton, and Ottens and brings him down a good tackle. Down to you, Rick. Just on John, it was a double blow there with that Cats goal. He actually got Rook's stops into his right thigh. So give me the slight cork. It looks to be OK now. Just remember last week when he copped a real heavy knock, came back on and really lifted the dog. So I'm sure they're hoping for the same thing this week. Minson front spot, Ottens got over the back. And then 
Otten's on the bottom, Boyd. Eagleton Silverwood again, he just fetched it out brilliantly to Scarlett. And Wojcinski heard the call to Kelly, and he delivers beautifully. That was Geelong at its very best. Silverwood creating it by winning a 50-50 footy. And then Mooney wide to Varco, late getting back. Went to ground, he's got to stand up. Hasn't he? He's probably the uh, best man on the ground. It's been magnificent. Murphy to started, Griffin. Starting to open up now. Play on. Hudson. Play on. Griffin. And back they go. In good hands, Gilby. Johnson just back on the ground. He made his debut the year before Yahoo was invented. He's at right half back. Bounces it to centre half back. Kick from Morris towards half forward. Hands in the back, was it? No, Scarlett reaches over the top and takes the mark. Matthew Scarlett with Bartell on short. Thought about it. Ling to space. So a brief lull as Geelong look to regroup. Everything has been thrown out, but Mooney misses it. Not reflected on the scoreboard, really. Oh. Selwood in desperate trouble. Oh, but he's going to get a front kick. Joel, I didn't see it. I was on the wrong side. Okay? Yeah, good decision there by the non-officiating umpire. He picked it up from a long way back. Just took a little bit of time to actually get back. You'll see there, it just slides up. Selwood so goes short to Kelly. Good evening to Marie and Bryce. And this uh, it makes it very hard for the Bulldogs now because the Thank Cats you, know they've got the lead. They can uh, win on 11 goals nine. They don't need to score again necessarily. Good mark, Kelly. That's where they're very good. Under pressure, they perform the skills that, that are needed. Milburn. So the Dogs have got to kick... Ablett's on. Four goals in seven minutes. Ablett off the interchange, running hard for Varco. <laughs> and great kick. Brilliantly done. Oh. The vagaries of the interchange. He came off the side furthest from the ball carrier. And the bloke tried to track him. But further to run. And here it is. John Syracuse and Ablett able to deliver to Corey who can put the cat safely into the grand final 35 meters out and missing and it's still a very very big lead insurmountable you would reckon it's only fair that the cat cats miss uh, a couple of uh, easy shots at goal <laughs> do we just think it's close because we expect them to be eight or ten goals in front by yeah. this point of the game or something but certainly it's that the, it has a look at the contest it's only four scoring shots or in fact, two scoring shots difference. I believe they've kicked three goals in three quarters, the Dogs. Yeah, and yeah. they've got to kick four in six minutes. Griffin, Johnson. John Syracuse are looking to go back to Johnson. It'll work OK. Griffin, he can run at them. 70 metres out. Minson going back with a flight. Well done, Scarlett. Wonderful. And when the Cats need him most, he's been fantastic in the second half. In those key contests, he's... Thanks, uh, Sean. He's been absolutely brilliant. Selwood from left half back towards the wing. Milburn reaches over the top of Eagleton, takes the mark. So it seems they're home, but not without a scare or two tonight. And I think it's one of those games where Rodney Eade will go home and really rue some missed opportunities and think to himself, we're a bit unlucky tonight. They're a very good side, Geelong. They, they really hurt you when... You think that you might have a chance? Knocked down by Callum. I think the similarities in this match is they'll say that they didn't play at their best yeah. like the preliminary final last year, which is scary for whoever they face next week. Bulldogs' last six scoring shots have been behind, and they've missed a couple extra to that. So they've probably had eight shots for goal since their last major. Blake will rest a lot easier tonight than he did this time last year. Yeah. So Chapman may be to come back in. Well, one will probably miss. There's Scott West. Jono draws level with him tonight on 324 games. He's done that most of his Ottens life, hasn't he? On the, uh, 
Well done, Callum. Higgins, who started so brightly. Harbrow, so the two H's have done well. They've got four goals between them, Higgins and Harbrow. It's really come of age, Harbrow. Cross, well done, Gilby. So Gilby, Eagledon on. One last chance, you have got to get a goal here. Not his best effort, although Murphy does get there. Credit to Eagleton. The kick was better than I thought. Murphy goes looking for Gian Siracusa deep in the pocket. They've just lacked that target down there when all else failed. They needed to go to the square. And I think Chapman would be reasonably happy now. Content. Who misses? Gian Siracusa, too slick for Harbour, knocked away by Ling. And it's out of bounds. I don't reckon there's any guarantee that Chapman's going to be right. Um, when we saw him uh, the other day, 70,000 people in attendance, which is uh, a fair return for a prelim. Hudson with Johnson over the top. Scarlett to Varco to Ablett. Kelly. So Kelly and Wojcicki, the two that have come back, have uh, got through it pretty well, you would think. Varco, Ablett, Acker running hard. Ablett delivering to full forward. Johnson held on to it. Yeah. Oh, he was holding you off, and you grabbed hold of his jump and the jumper went down. He, he is so brilliant with that, Steve Johnson. He just he knows where the ball's going to land. He just holds with the one arm, and here's Hargrave's just getting a handful of jumper. That's just good strength. He's been relatively well held, Johnson. Hargrave's yeah. has had a great game, and I reckon you could say that about a lot of the Bulldogs yeah. players, that they've actually... One on one, they've stacked up. They've looked pretty good against their opponents. But they've kicked seven goals. Yeah, can't win with seven goals. No. Not against his side. No. They've got half of it right. They've kept Geelong to a, yep. a moderate score, but they haven't been able to get the other half. Jono gets his second. Cats into the final, the grand final. I, I think the Bulldogs have. Have proven though that uh, that the future's not too bad for them. They've got some quality. Uh, they need to get some more players, but still their their Achilles heel is no tall forwards. Uh, whilst their backs have been very good against, and we saw Hawthorne a couple of weeks ago. They haven't got a, a really big tall backman either. They're going to have to find one over the and summer. Tom, Tom Williams. One. Tom Williams is a one, isn't he? He is. Got to get his body right. Twenty-eight points the margin then. And the dogs certainly have shown a lot of spirit tonight. But they've broken down on the forward line against the back line we knew coming in was pretty tough to crack. Boyd's got it from Cross, Eagleton. Now Gian Siracusa, rather tentative at that ball. He's 60 metres out, drops it on the boot, but under pressure. And Milburn, who had his problems early, goes back and takes this defensive mark. Two and a half minutes to go. Milburn to Scarlett. His last quarter has been outstanding. And pushing up the ground, offering is Enright, right on the 50-meter arc. Left half back. Tomorrow night, Hawthorne and St Kilda. And the winner will play Geelong, who are looking to go back to back. And Geelong have only once gone back to back. 51 and 52. In 53, they lost the grand final to Collingwood by 12 points that after beating Footscray in the preliminary ball comes up towards the wing Otten Selwood Hunt got through hard man attacker and right <laughs> now we'll have some fun Joel Corey marks on the 50. Well he marked it at about 60 <laughs> and he juggled at 20 metres so he's done really well for himself. It's really important Joel Corey he reminds me of Nigel Lappin in the line size he's yeah. the real genuine runner pushes up runs hard wins his own ball Runs hard back. Ling getting back. So this will be the Cats' 15th success consecutive win. That's the sequence you took, Lee, into your first premiership in 01. But it's the first time in 20 years that, two that a team has won 15 straight on more than one occasion. They were 15 straight last year before Port beat them. 15 straight again. And just for the record, Bomber Thompson is just the third coach in history to have achieved that. The other two are Kevin Sheedy and Dick Reynolds to have taken a team to 15 consecutive wins on two occasions. It's a remarkable achievement. Griffin's kick inside. And do you know the strange thing about tonight? It's a five-goal win, yet we keep singing the praises of the opposition, and they have done well. 
sometimes it's expectation. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, what you subtly expect is going to happen compared to exactly what presents itself when they start playing. That week off, though, sometimes hey, you, you're not in your normal routine. And I think we uh, saw that with Geelong for a little bit of this game, that they would just battle to really kick start and get moving and uh, and link up and play that continuous football that we've seen them play for so long. The two ex-crows have struggled tonight, Hudson and Welsh, haven't they? Yeah. And they were brought into the side for this moment. For, for a finals appearance, they're an experienced uh, players from experienced club that have been in finals, just haven't delivered. Well, the irony in this, this will be the second lowest score. Geelong have kicked all season, but it's the lowest for the dogs. So we talked about averaging 60 points against them in the last 12 weeks, where so they're on 54, the dogs. It was a great contest. Hard fought, but Geelong yet again. Terrific win into the final, the grand final next week. Received inevitability about the result during the week, and I suppose the inevitability of it now. I thought that contest was magnificent. The Bulldogs were very gallant, but Geelong were very good as well. It was a great match. It was Bucks, and the captain led from the front, didn't he, Tom Hardy? What a terrific match, his Rick. Great game, Tom. Into a grand final, which is a major earn it. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was a, it was a classic sort of preliminary final, if you like, and uh, which is which is the way it should be. The top four went through the second last week, and a really gutsy effort from our boys, I thought. It's amazing with your side, when you get challenged, that's when you respond? Well, I don't know about that. It was, uh, they played really well. They started to pick up some really good form last week. And, um, you know, it's an exciting game, and I thought it was, as I said, really proud of the boys' efforts tonight. Just in that third quarter, they started to play a, a tempo footy, a, a soccer-style footy, and you just couldn't get your hold, in the, hold of the ball. What was spoken about three-quarter time to change that? Uh, not so much that. We just want, obviously wanted to keep driving the way through, and it was a really intense game, and uh, preliminary finals are like that. And, um, you know, it was a, a cracking standard game, very hard and fast, and, uh, you know, we've, we cover up now and front up in eight days' time. All right, good luck next week, Tony, Tom. Cheers, mate. So from Tom Harley and Ricky, let's go to Tim with one of the stars, another star of the night. Andrew, well, they were a really worthy opponent tonight, weren't they? Yeah, they were great. It's, uh, you know, credit to them, they, uh, they showed up, no-one gave them a chance, really. We, we knew they were going to be good, and, and they were, and uh, I suppose it took to, you know, the last few minutes for us to crack them. What did Bob Thompson say at half-time? Uh, yeah, he was into us a bit. We, uh, we probably were, weren't playing the way we wanted to. We, were, we sort of uh, you know, went away from a few things that he said before the game that, that, uh, that we didn't do. So he was onto us and uh, you know, we've got, definitely got stuff to improve on. Do you have a preference of who you play next week in the grand final? No, no, no. It's uh, you know, grand final. It's a great effort to, to be there, but uh, our job's not done yet. And uh, we're just going to look forward to obviously this week and get ourselves up to Talking about the job not being done, I actually had a quick look around at the final siren there. The players weren't getting overexcited. No, we, we haven't spoken about uh, about this week. Obviously, we we, uh, we really rate the Bulldogs, and, and you know we're lucky we've got past them tonight. And we're going to be doing everything we can this week to, to get ourselves up. Can you believe you're in another grand final? Uh, uh, it's a good feeling. Yeah, it's definitely a good feeling. It's, it's great to play footy like this. Thanks for your time, and good luck next week. Thank you. Thank you. Now James Kelly with Ricky. Now, James, how do you feel at a moment like this? You just got through to a grand final. Is it is it relief? Is it excitement? What is it? Uh, it's a bit of both, mate. You know, we've um, we've played well all year and we've got ourselves in a position to have another crack at a, a premiership. And it's uh, it's a bit of relief that we're finally here. But um, at the same time, really excited for the opportunity. Do you feel you're better placed this year than last year with that finals experience under your belt? Um, yeah, probably. It's a, it's a little hard to say. You know, we. Um, we think we've got some good momentum going at the moment. Hopefully we can keep that going next week. And just on yourself, mate, you missed the last three weeks with a quad injury. Was there times where you were concerned you wouldn't be able to force your way back into the side? Yeah, I think I was a bit concerned at some stages. Um, stirred it up a couple of times at training and, you know, I thought I was just going to keep hanging around. But um, uh, fitness staff got me up this week and I was uh, glad that I got through. All right, well, good luck next week, mate. Well done. Great, thanks, mate. James Kelly's missed those three matches. Now, Chappie... It'll be a big talking point all week, won't it? Well, he'll be a happy chappy because uh, <laughs> if he's if it all holds up, 
and uh, he gets his rehab right. Uh, it should be enough time, sufficient time, for the hamstring to recover. As Frank Costa, of course, been a great president for the Geelong Footy Club for a long, long time. But how early in the week do you reckon they'll leave it? We we'll make the call with Chappie. Will they leave it as long as they can? They'll leave it longer than this week. Um, but uh, he'll be a day-to-day -day proposition, and it definitely will be one of the talks of the week whether Paul Chapman is going to front up next Saturday. Well, in a match that had a lot of twists and turns, I reckon the first 10 minutes of the last quarter was just everything because the Dogs had the ball, but they couldn't get a goal. And in the end, it was the Cats for the 15th time in a row this season, just like last, 83 to 54. Finals footy of the MCG. The Cats through to the grand final.